Hello, and welcome to Leftover Time, the show about reheated food and NBA takes. As always, we are going to uh, attempt to recover food that we may otherwise throw away and stretch to find an NBA analogy to match our cooking method. Today's food, rice. The recipe, fried rice. And on the NBA take side, three of the best Euro stash players of all time. On today's episode, fried rice. Wholesome, savory, endlessly adaptable, and really best cooked after the rice has had some time to chill. Maybe even be forgotten about for a day or two. We almost need to dehydrate the rice so that when we coat it in oil and other seasonings, it is primed to absorb, all while still holding the form that made it great fresh out of the pot. Now to the NBA side of things. When a team has drafted a player, Fans in front offices alike are excited about the potential of their new player. Could he be a star, a steal of the draft, or hell, even just a quality role player to bolster the team? They want to see the player right away, oftentimes overburdening a teenager with hopes of a franchise and grandeur that is never really achieved. Some teams take a longer view, though. Drafting a player overseas who is already competing in professional leagues against grown men that don't have, you know, archaic or backwards rules about eligibility to turn pro. For those overseas players, whether due to current contracts with their particular club or because of a team's long view, they stay with their club to continue to develop. When those special players finally make their NBA debut, they see the game unlike their soon-to-be peers and confound the competition. Now before we go to the recipe, I just want to call out two American stash players to note. Uh, Larry Bird was selected third overall by the Boston Celtics in 1978 and elected to stay in college for his final year before finally joining the league and dominating. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs uh, also waited for two seasons for 1987 first overall draft pick David Robinson to come aboard. He spent the time away to fulfill his military commitment, which also led to his later nickname in the league, the Admiral. To start, preheat your pan on high without oil. While the pan heats up, prepare the mise en place, a fancy word for all of the chopping, cracking, other prep work needed, so all you have to do is focus on the cooking. I am going with what I have on hand, namely carrot, celery, a quarter red onion, a jalapeno, and a habanada, a fun kind of botanical achievement that has dramatically reduced the heat of a habanero while maintaining its flavor. Crack an egg or two into a bowl and beat until homogenous. You'll know the pan is ready when a drop or two of water dances across the pan, too hot for the water to even sizzle. Lower the heat and add the oil. After a minute, pour the eggs into the pan and let sit for five to 10 seconds and then start to stir until mostly cooked through. Remove the eggs back into the bowl. Quick aside, this is going back into the pan, so don't worry about any concerns of raw egg. Add oil to the pan again and add the veggies. Fry for a few minutes until they start to look translucent. Remove the veggies from the pan. Add oil to the pan again and add the rice. Continue to toss to coat the rice in the oil. You'll notice that we are frying in batches. By not mixing everything all at the same time, we let each ingredient have distinction and time to evolve by itself before it is brought into the fold. Each of the players we are discussing had achieved success in their European careers, each winning at least one MVP selection. The NBA was the next level of competition for each of them. After coming into their own without the hyper-focused microscope of the NBA media fan apparatus. Once most of the oil in the pan has coated the rice, add back the veggies and stir. Add the soy sauce, the white pepper, a little MSG, and stir again to coat. Finally, add the egg and using your stirring utensil, start to break it up all the while mixing. After another minute of cooking, kill the heat and serve onto a plate and enjoy. After a day or two wait in the fridge, the rice has been transformed much like the patient transformation our next topics of discussion took. Before we get to the NBA, please subscribe. First up on our discussion of renowned Eurostash players, Tony Kukoc. 
Tony Kukoc was selected by the Chicago Bulls with the 29th pick in 1990, just as the emerging dynasty of Chicago was about to start. Phenom in his native Croatia, he was nicknamed the waiter for his adept passing that served his teammates the ball on a silver platter. At 17, Kuko started playing professionally for his hometown team, KK Split. From the jump, Kuko was a revelation. Passing, shooting, and ball handling skills, whatever his team needed, he provided. Championships and MVP honors followed until the summer of 1992 when he signed with the Italian team Benetton Treviso, again winning multiple championships during that season and more faithfully playing against his soon-to-be teammates Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in the Olympics. Kukoc led Croatia against the USA Dream Team in the gold medal round, and while his team was trounced, early signs of respect were earned along with the silver. Finally, in the summer of 1993, Kukoc made his way to the US just as Jordan was retiring. Kukoc's rookie season was admirable, but not game-breaking. He continued to score well and served up his teammates with easy shots. The Bulls, behind Pippen, made it to the NBA Eastern Conference Finals and were sent home in a seven-game slugfest against the New York Knicks. Next season, Kukoc continued to grow and was a significant complement to the Pippen-led Bulls. In the midst of the 94-95 season, Jordan returned and Kukoc assumed a role off the bench. Despite the return of MJ, the Bulls were bounced again in the playoffs, this time by the Orlando Magic. Then, in the 1996 season, the Bulls ascended to NBA Elysium, winning a league record 72 games. Kukoc remained in a bench role and collected six Man of the Year honors as the Bulls' third leading scorer. The Bulls won the championship that year and the subsequent two seasons. Each year, Kukoc maintained his role as the sixth man. The Bulls won the championship that year and the subsequent two seasons. Each year, Kukoc maintained his role as the sixth man. When Jordan and Pippen ended their time with the Bulls, it was Kukoc who took the mantle and led the team in points, rebounds, and assists, but was unable to will the Bulls back to the playoffs. In the middle of the next season, he was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. The year after that, he was traded to the Hawks, and after a season and a half with the Hawks, was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, where he would play out his Hall of Fame career. Nothing else he needed to prove. Next course, Emmanuel Manu Ginobili. Selected by the San Antonio Spurs with the 57th pick in the 1999 draft, Manu had been playing professionally for four years, three in his native Argentina and one year in the Italian League. After being drafted, Manu remained in the Italian League for a further three years, winning championships and MVP laurels. In the 2002-2003 season, Manu joined the Spurs as a backup. The Spurs were in the midst of saying goodbye to David Robinson, who announced he'd retire at season's end, so any hype for the Argentine was muted. If the response to Manu was quiet, his start to the season was silent. Slowly, on account of injury, Manu did find his step, and by the time the playoffs came around, he looked back to EuroLeague MVP form. The Spurs won the championship and sent the Admiral off in style. Over the next 15 seasons, all with the Spurs, Manu remained incredible. His no look passes would sometimes catch his own teammates off guard before they took an open shot. His ability to draw contact at the rim and throw up a prayer that seemed to be answered more often than not, and his constant effort galvanized a Spurs team that won over 50 games each year for the lockout season and Manu's last year. Alongside Tim Duncan and Tony Parker, the Spurs were a homegrown super team that became synonymous with taking a chance on international players and unselfish play that was often described as the beautiful game. They would win three more championships in 2005, 2007, and finally in 2014 against the defending champion Heat. Starting in 2007, Manu came off the bench as a sixth man that would terrify the opposing benches, a starting caliber player willing to lead a second unit. Even as a bench player, Manu was selected as an All-NBA player in 2008 and 2011. As his retirement neared, legendary coach Greg Popovich quipped, I don't want him to ever retire. I want to squeeze every last ounce of juice I can. I'm going to use him like a bar of soap until there's nothing left for his family or anybody else in the world. Just done. I'm going to squeeze it until then. And for our final Eurostash player, Nikola Jokic. The Denver Nuggets selected Nikola Jokic in 2014 with the 41st pick. An interesting choice as the Nuggets had earlier selected another European big man in the same draft, Yusuf Nurkic. 
While Nurk came over right away, the 19-year-old Jokic elected to stay one more season in his native Serbia and finish up the season with KK Mega Basket. That season, he would lead the Adriatic League in rebounding and won MVP honors. Upon joining the Nuggets for the 2015-16 season, Jokic was immediately used off of the bench in favor of Nurk. But midway through the season, Jokic was tapped to start and played well enough to put himself in the Rookie of the Year conversation, though he did not win the award. Midway through the next year, any cloud of who should start at center was cleared up when the Nuggets decided to trade Nurkic. In his second NBA season, Jokic improved in every statistical category and his preternatural passing started to reveal itself. With his height and patience, Jokic was able to survey the entire court and make pinhole passes to his teammates for easy shots. After being defeated by the Minnesota Timberwolves in the last game of the regular season in 2018, a game both teams needed to win to make the playoffs, the Nuggets and Jokic evolved. They would make the playoffs each of the next five seasons, Jokic now a regular All-Star selection and eventual back-to-back -back MVP in 2021 and 2022. Finally, in 2023, fully healthy, the Nuggets won the championship, Jokic got the Finals MVP honors, and led the overall playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. Fried rice, a dish that needs initial patience, best done with batch cooking to give each ingredient time to come together in its own unique way, and finally rounding into form in that last cook. The NBA is not a league of patience, but in those rare instances where a team's patience is rewarded, the results are incredible. Mia!